Hi, and thank you for watching the forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and we are so pleased to have Sarah Fergoso on our show. She is the author of Everyday Paleo and owner of a gym as well. Yes. Do you want to tell us the name of your gym? <laughs> sure. I am co-owner of JS Strength and Conditioning in Chico, California, and wow. J is for my husband, John, and then S for Sarah. I love it. So yes, my husband and I own a facility together in, in Chico, and he's a, a chiropractor, actually. Really? So um, the two businesses really work well together. Yes, do. It's a good yeah. compliment because so often people come into the office where what they really need to work on is mobility and strength. Yes. So it's just a great combo. Yeah, and with yeah. the paleo too. It's yeah. like the, the total holistic the package. package. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes. we have to say right off the bat, first of all, Sarah knows. I'm so excited I can hardly see Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah is here with us. Thank you. You're she so sweet. is like if you Google paleo her name comes up. She's like <laughs> one of, she is a goddess in the world no. of paleo. More like the grandma. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, you are just, it like it is, we have, you guys are so fortunate to have Sarah here on this show, local show, because mm -hmm. seriously, you are world renowned in thank the world you. of paleo eating. You're going to explain a little bit about it. Sure. I have to say right off the start though, the reason I am so excited is because this book, Sarah's book, called Everyday Paleo, and she laughed when I brought mine out because if you could see it, it's all torn and flagged and food <laughs> all over it. She taught me how to cook using this book because oh, seriously, so I did cool. not know how to do anything, and I got this book, and I went to her seminar on um, cooking and eating and lifestyle, and it changed my life, and it changed Aww. my children's lives. You guys aren't supposed to and make me cry. <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, she is a very, you're very talented. Thank you Amazing so much. Amazing person. And Thank you. So tell us exactly what is paleo? How did you get into this? You have sure. such an interesting story. Thank and you. can yeah. we start with that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll try and keep it brief because okay. you know me, I like to talk. So. <laughs> um, so paleo, as kind of the world probably perceives it, yeah. it's been put out to the media as being the caveman diet, yes. which always makes me laugh and makes my kids laugh because they're like, you don't wear a loincloth, mom. <laughs> I'm not out in the backyard hunting squirrels. Although John might like that, right? He might. <laughs> it could be a Halloween she costume. She might have the loincloth. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. But it's a little chilly. Yeah. However, but just like the gist of what, the, what paleo really means to me and mm -hmm. what my message is, is kind of getting back to our roots and understanding, you know, what happened to America? Yeah. What happened to our health? Because really it, it doesn't take a lot to understand that there's been a serious decline Absolutely. in our health, not in, only with our children, but with our, yeah. you know, with us. Well, a lot of processed foods, right? Right. Our, our food source is just not what it used to be. No. And it's, it's really paleo is almost more like, okay, how did grandma used to cook? So, yeah. but we like to go back before agriculture and look at our hunter-gatherer ancestors yes. who weren't riddled with non-infectious disease. Yeah. There's no sign of cancer like there is now or heart mm -hmm. disease or mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes, by yeah. the way, but you can't call it that anymore nope. no, because we have kids being diagnosed right. with diabetes before mm -hmm. they can even drive a car. Okay. So there's something wrong. And yeah. finally, people are starting to make the correlation between nutrition and our health problems. Yeah. So what paleo does is it cuts out the foods that tend to be really problematic and cause inflammation and can cause disease, yeah. non-infectious disease. Okay. So we look at instead eating food that's closest to nature. So like grass-fed beef, pasture-raised yeah. poultry, wild-caught salmon, and then organic vegetables. My big thing is locally source your food so you I know exactly it. where it's coming from. Yes. Be responsible for your own food, plant a mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. And then avoid things like grains mm -hmm. and cut back on the dairy. Don't drink milk every yes. single day. Um, some dairy's fine for people. The fermented dairy typically is better. And, and that then, would be like, what would that like, be like? Like kefir? yogurt, Yo kefir. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, and we recommend kind of cutting all of that stuff out at first yes. and then adding it back in after 30 days. And we, I suggest to people, Avoid grains for 30 days, yeah. add them back in and see how you feel. And most often people feel so much better without it that yeah. they stick to the foods that are really nourishing their bodies. Right. So, I mean, yes. we work with folks who are reversing autoimmune disease. Yes. People who are actually shrinking cancer tumors by going on like more of a ketogenic diet yep. because mm -hmm. cancer is feeding off of sugar. So it's, right. it's so much information, yeah. but the basics of it is know where your food comes from. I love it. Avoid foods that ca cause inflammation and then see how you feel. 
Now, do you feel like, is, it, is another term that you could use for paleo, would it be kind of like clean eating? I, yes, but that can kind of get convoluted because, okay. you know, okay. people kind of equate clean eating to whole grains and there's oh, still some processed oh. foods in there and that's what we're really trying to have people avoid, yeah. especially is the gluten, is the okay. wheat. So, um, so yeah, I mean, definitely clean eating is kind of a buzzword. Real, yeah. I like to say real food, yeah. you know, real, yeah. eat food that doesn't have a label on it yeah. and right. that cuts out a lot of stuff, right. but there really is so much more variety when you start looking at, look at all the vegetables that we have available, look yeah. at all the different protein sources. Yeah. Look at all the spices that we have, and it's why I wrote those yeah. books, yeah. which are so. Uh, if you are scared to cook, I'm telling you, everyday paleo is the way to go because Thank you you, you ba break it down. And uh, you know what? Honestly, before this, I did not know that you could do taco seasoning without a package. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> exactly. And Sarah, you taught me that I can do it. And last night, I made a wonderful <laughs> taco salad without the wheat stuff, mm -hmm. and I did it by seasonings and that you had. Taste shown better. in this book. Oh, it tasted yeah. so good. Yes. And it's good for my kids. It's not destroying our brains. Right. And, right. and one of the things I do want to point out though about that book is that's kind of like her vintage <laughs> everyday paleo book. Yeah. You yeah. apparently revamped it. And yes. in that book, I just briefly looked through it and she was saying that when she when she put this book together, her husband was actually taking pictures with a camera. A little and then Nikon. A little <laughs> Nikon, Nikon camera. And, yes. then, and then they printed this book and yeah. it sounds like you printed this out of need. Yes. Like, right? For mm -hmm. your life and then you could see that other people needed it. So it was really a grassroots movement and when I was approached by my publisher, yeah. basically he was like, here's a contract, you have no budget, good luck. <laughs> So we, we, we just did it. We buckled down I and did it. it. And my yeah. husband would come home from seeing patients on his lunch break and I'd have like 15 things that I prepared and Rowan like strapped to my back in the Moby Rally. Oh, yeah, it. he's six now. He was two at the time. And my husband would like throw on old clothes really fast and like take pictures and then go back to work. And it was, it took about a year to write the book oh and it my. became a national bestseller in the first week of publication. Wow. Despite the pictures that no, were taken. Yeah, absolutely. Because well, people yeah. need this. And it's so user friendly. And I, I had, a whole cabinet of cookbooks mm -hmm. and never used them and I had this one and I was able to follow the recipes yeah. easily with no prior knowledge yeah. of the Thank kitchen you, you awesome. know and that was the goal that, yeah, anybody exactly. can do it <laughs> yeah. with this yeah. so then yeah. you did your kids book we have to yes. talk. and That's by the way the cute. publisher found you how so uh, Rob Wolf who is my mentor and dear yeah. friend and um, co-owner of NorCal Strength and Conditioning really is how I got started into this whole thing because I was actually really really sick before oh, really? I mean, this wasn't just an accident. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go on a diet. And exactly. I, yeah. I, I was overweight, yes. Yeah. However, I, I was experiencing stuff that at 30, I was like, well, I guess it's normal. My mom, you know, was having these same things. Right. And I actually lost my mom to cancer, too. Oh, and so I was just sorry. going down this path of like, gosh, I guess I'm going to just have to give in to the fact that when you hit 30 and you've had three kids, you just start feeling like, garbage. And that's not the case. It's not the case. I feel better now than I did in my teens. Yes. Than I did as a child. You, you know, know I, anyway. yeah. through nutrition. Yes. No, it's yes. true. When you talk about nutrition, I actually at some point was diagnosed, well, nobody diagnosed. I had a friend who does wellness and she said, actually, I was feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm only 30 years old. Yeah. And it was actually from being on a sugar high. Exactly. You know, the sugar up and down, Yes, that mm -hmm. really can affect you. You can almost, you know, go into like a sort of depression. Uh, and that's what paleo really does is it helps regulate your insulin levels. Oh, I love it. And you become, uh, this is kind of, I don't want to get too sciencey, but sure. your body learns to become fat adapt adapted rather than carbohydrate dependent, basically. Yeah. So it's not essentially a low carb diet in and of itself, but you, you actually add more fat back to your diet than what we've been told is normal and mm -hmm. good for us. Mm -hmm. And our bodies need healthy fat. Yes. It needs Especially women. Especially, especially women, women. Yes, and especially absolutely. children too. Our brains are 90% fat. And yep. if you just think about it from that perspective, why have we vilified something that our bodies are, are made out of, that are, the organ that helps us function yeah. is made out of? Well, it so, just goes to show how good advertising works. It does. Right? And how easily brainwashed we are. So yeah. what are some gradual ways if people want to do this to yeah. add paleo into their lives? You know, I'm a huge advocate of taking things one step at a time, especially if you're doing a gigantic change like this, because mm -hmm. like you said, you didn't know how to cook. Right. Before you start, right. you picked up the book. Yeah. Right. I, I fortunately had a little bit of cooking skills in my back pocket, which made the transition easier. But I suggest people just start with breakfast. Yeah. Start with the first meal of the day because that's often the one that looks the worst because we're so used to the bowl of cereal and the grande whatever, sugary yes, latte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 
that's what you start with. Same with kids, a Pop-Tart or some toast. And you kind of get that rush, that rush of energy, and then you crash. Yep. That's right. it. And then you right go for the next school. Yep. Right when they get to school. Or yep. for you, yep. a couple hours after you get to the office. And yep. then you go for right. the next thing, the bagel or That's the Snickers right. bar. So if you start making the change at breakfast, people start feeling better right away. And they yeah. notice that. Because if you start with protein and some fat, so like some eggs and some avocado, folks start to notice right away, wow, I wasn't hungry until lunch. Yeah. And I didn't want to, you know, donk my neighbor on the head because I was so aggro because I was starving. Right. Right. And that makes that transition easier and then go to lunch. I and so it. switch your lunch and then do that for a few weeks so that becomes normal. Then move to dinner. Because mm -hmm. this is a lifestyle. It's not you know, that next 30 day plan that you're going to do to fit into your jeans. Yeah. For most people, it's, I, I have to feel better. Right. And then looking better is a byproduct typically mm -hmm. of, of eating this way. Mm -hmm. So baby steps is, is the, I, I am crazy and I jumped in with both feet and it was really hard. <laughs> that's how I do things. So <laughs> Me I, too. I understand. Me too. So if you know yourself and you're going to stick to it and that's your personality, great. But I was, you know, I had cravings and I was horrible to live with for about two weeks. But then I was like, oh, I feel amazing. I'm never going back. So yes, I say gradual steps. Yeah. And then become closer to your food source because it comes all it becomes almost more of a lack for lack of better terminology, a spiritual yeah. connection yeah. to your journey because you're sourcing food locally, you're meeting your local farmers, you're growing your own garden. And it's just becomes so much more than food. Yeah. Uh, um I have about an hour's more question and we have I about know. one minute. So <laughs> I want to see yeah. about your newest ventures coming yes. up. You have your latest cookbook is this Italian cuisine yes. and you ah. have something else coming out this summer. Yeah, I just finished uh, my Thai cuisine book. Ooh, we traveled to Thailand. That. We were in Italy and it. yes. um, I actually have a workshop coming up in Chico, which is the oh. first workshop I've ever done Chico. on May 10th oh. at my gym yeah. at JS Strength and Conditioning. So you can learn a whole lot more about paleo on that day yeah. and in the, the book. Sarah's known for your website which is everydaypaleo.com yes. you're also known for your podcast with jason c Seib. Seib mm -hmm. at paleo lifestyle fitness and fitness podcast yes. if nice. she's in the top 10 <laughs> That's great. we love sarah Aww. everydaypaleo.com yeah. we are going to have to wrap it up but we're going to take a quick break we'll be back with the second half of our show <laughs> in a minute Hi, and we're back on the forum, and we're here with Don Burton, Yay. and you may know this personality from Kay Shasta. His voice is that once you hear it, you'll know that you've heard this many times over. And he's here to talk to us today about his new CD that he's produced. And so let's jump right in. Yeah, you know, right. um, I people say, what have you been doing? I, when I say I'm living the dream, I kind of am. Yeah. yeah. And I say that because we were talking earlier. It's like, how did you get into radio and all that? Yeah. I, I always wanted to be on the radio. I would listen to KRDG, which yes. you remember. <laughs> yeah. And I Back would, in the day. I would always just think, man, that's got to be the coolest job. I wonder what they do during when they're playing their records and all that. Yeah. I, I never really told anybody that I wanted to do that, but when the opportunity came up, I, I jumped right at it. So how did that opportunity come up? Tell us about you that. You know what? It was an interesting story because my dad had heard, it was when K9FM was here downtown, and he said, hey, someone has left and there, uh, there's a job open. Oh. And I walked in there immediately. I dropped what I was doing and went there. And the receptionist said, there's no job. There's no job. I don't know what you're talking about. And it was like I wouldn't leave yeah. until I found uh -huh. out. And finally, Persistence. someone popped their head up over a cubicle, and that was uh, Kathy Vance, who was part of the morning show with Dave Tappan yeah. at that time, Dave and Kathy morning show. And she said, are you talking about the internship? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and so she interviewed me, and after about 15, 20 minutes of talking with me, she said, can you come here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. and do whatever we say for no pay? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. And oh. I, I did, you know, and I go do career days with kids, and I tell them, be an intern, yep. go uh, volunteer, yes. because what okay. it did for me was uh, but six months later, I had a job. Right. I you love know? it. Yeah. And yeah. That's that how it started. Back well, in 91. And you found out immediately, you w immediately that you loved it. Yeah. And you could have as easily found out that you didn't. didn't and exactly. it would have been a great lesson either way. So yeah. Yeah, you were in yeah. the right place. You'd worked hard. You'd yeah. put in some time. Yeah. And found your passion. Yeah. yeah it, was, it's, it was fun. I didn't care about working for free. I just loved being in there. 
So wow. how long have you been doing that? So that was 91. Oh my and gosh. at that wow. point, I got in later that year. Yeah. And I've done it ever since. Oh, that's wow. amazing. Yeah. So you've been, you've, have you bounced around at stations? Or where yeah, a little have you bit. Been? A little bit. You know, mm -hmm. there was a time when KZAP Radio was here. It became the Eagle. And that was a rock station. I worked on that after K9. Um, and then eventually in 1999 is when I went to K Shasta. Mm -hmm. And I've been there ever since. So. And one wow. of the really interesting things about Don is that um, he actually raises two girls as a single father mm -hmm. and does an amazing job. I see him all the time picking up his kiddos from mm -hmm. school. And um, I mean, tell us how, how, how do you do all of this stuff? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. How do you balance being a full-time single, yeah. <laughs> single dad with well, your career? Yeah. You know, if my career was only radio, it would be easy because every once in a while I do sure. a live broadcast on the weekend. Um, but I also have a business called Sound Entertainment. So I do weddings and I DJ oh, weddings. Yeah. So I really, um, you know, some Saturdays I'm doing that. And I try to only do it a couple times a month. But, you know, there's there's every day I'm with with my girls yeah. the minute I get off. And I work a morning show, so I'm off by 1.30 to o'clock yeah. and I have the whole afternoon to spend with them oh, and you know basically my thing is is all of all this stuff I do that's the most important absolutely. obviously yeah, you know absolutely. Yeah. and Sydney is 18 now and she's been with me since second grade we yeah. it was just us yeah. so you know um, it's just something that I've always done mm -hmm. yeah. you know mm -hmm. so it's, it's like second nature yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. and so you have one of your little girls on your CD you know what that is Sydney and this is she was probably 16 when we recorded this oh. and it's a song it's a really special song and it's a song I wrote on the way back from Memphis when I went to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I realized that these, these people, these kids have angels on their side and that's what the song's about. Oh. And it's a basically kind of a back and forth about a girl going through cancer research and how her parents are dealing with it, mm -hmm. seeing her, uh, seeing her oh. parents cry, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and that. So anyway, yeah. that's what the, uh, the song's about. And Sydney sang on that and she's, she's fantastic. Oh. She's an amazing musician because when she was in her mom's belly, oh, we were in a band called Little Kid <laughs> and we literally practiced probably four times a week. And so oh. she grew up hearing music. She came out basically playing music. She plays just by ear and is, is wow. an amazing musician. So. so how did you get into music? Have you always been a musician or? Okay. You know, I, I've, I always listened and I always was really a kind of a lyrics guy. I loved um, stuff like Jim Croce, Elton John and yeah. things like that, along with rock music when I grew up so that was always a big part of me and then my grandmother Sue Burton bought me my very first guitar when oh. I was probably 10 okay and um, started taking lessons and after a while I wasn't very good at it and so I stopped playing but when I was in my 20s I started playing again yeah. uh -huh. and then eventually I started I started writing and, and yeah. doing things like that so so really as an adult you you really mastered it yeah. as an adult yeah. well we we all just kind of do our thing I, <laughs> I, I kind of strum and sing I, I put great people around me yeah. that, so, that play so well, how did That's the really CD nice come about it. you know the CD came about because a good friend of mine named Mira said you should have a CD <laughs> and she was listening to me play and she said I don't know why you don't have a CD yeah. and she's the one that introduced me to the whole vision board yeah oh. put, put this up have it by your bed and things that you want put them up there. That's right. And one of the things she said is put a CD with your name on it. Yeah. I love and it. I did. And the more I saw it, it was there for months and months. I finally picked up the phone and I called a guy named Bruce Turgon who has after hours recorders. And I was just going to do a couple songs and it became a full 12 song album. Oh, oh that's yeah. great. You know, the interesting thing, Sarah Fergoso was on right before you and she had the same thing happen with her move, doing her travel the world and create a cookbook about uh -huh. the travels. Uh -huh. She spoke it out loud and not on the 4th of July and not 20 minutes later her agent called and said hey I have this idea what about traveling the world <laughs> so and what writing happens? a cookbook I mean it works you put doesn't it, out it? There. you vision it and it comes about that's right and yeah. now you're doing that yeah. we get to hear you every day on K Shasta Monday yep. through Friday yep 
and then we get to hear you out doing your music. How, how often does your band perform? Uh, the band is called Silver Bridge, and we, you know, we perform now and then. We do about uh, eight to ten gigs a year or so. Okay. We don't do a lot. So. We kind of play it at festivals. We do the Summer Serenade and Friday Night in the Park, yeah. and usually play at the fair. We don't we don't Aww. do too many bars. We we kind of pick and choose our gigs, but um, we really have a good time. Yeah. Playing. Well, I'm so excited, you guys. Yeah. We're going to get to hear Don. He's going to do some music for us here in a few minutes. What are you going to play for us? You know what I'm going to play is uh, I'm going to play a new song. There's and it'll kind of represent what I've done here on the album. The yeah. album is a mix of kind of straightforward rock songs to um, something that's kind of got a little bit of a country feel. Um, but I'm going to do a song that I wrote um, called Savannah. Okay. And it kind of talks about your hometown mm -hmm. and, of course, that one girl that got away. Oh! oh. There's always that. For all you men out there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's nice. That's Even good. if you I can't get to a show, you get to <laughs> listen get to, to him it. sing this song. Well, here. and we can all relate to that, too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, so stay tuned because what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick break and let Don get set up because he's going to sing for us. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. 
Thank you. You had that in you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh that and more. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can hear more on your album. Oh. Yeah. And, um, Don Burton on the tracks. Right. Ashley held this up. We got a good picture of it earlier. Yeah. So the best way for, for your fans to get this is how? Well, the three fans that want to pick that up. <laughs> Both of them. Oh you know what? Um, for now, at shows um, with okay. the band Silverbridge, I always have them. I'm going to do some solo shows. It will eventually be on iTunes Good. and all of that, or just send a Facebook message. Yeah, that's easy. Go to Facebook. You'll friend them back, or they'll friend you, or just send you a message, yeah. and you'll get it. What a great oh show God. we've had here today, huh? Yeah. Gosh, to Thank have you. Sarah and now you, Don. Oh, just thanks for sharing your art with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we yeah. love having you, and I hope you've enjoyed the show. I know Ashley and I have really had a yeah, fun time, time today with Sarah Fergoso, Don Burton. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for another episode of The Forum.